Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. That's why we're here. We love you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for the promise of your presence in our worship and in our praise. We love you, Lord. The Bible says in Psalms 34, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's the King James Version. The New Living Translation says, I will praise the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Does anybody got a praise this morning? Which means, has anybody got a voice this morning? Has anybody got something good to say about God this morning? We love you, Lord. We're here to learn. We're here to grow. We're here to see you, Father, and to be moved and to be changed. Look at somebody and say, every praise matters. Every praise matters. Brother Kareem, here we go. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Come on, can someone shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Let's sing it, every praise. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God.
praise from the valley. I praise from the mountain. Come on, if you know it, sing with me. I praise when I'm sure. And I praise when I'm doubting. Praise when I'm doubting. I praise when I'm numbered. I praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water. My enemies drown. Could you sing it real loud? Come on, say. As long as I'm breathing. I feel it and I'll praise when I don't hey. I'll praise cause I know you're still in control you're still in control you're still in my praise you is a know. weapon it's more than a sound more than a sound and my praise is a shout yeah Let every share it go down, down. Praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. You I'm say, praise, praise cause you're sovereign, you praise cause you reign, you praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise you, Jesus. We glorify your name, Father. Would you just lift your hands, whether you're watching us online. You are worthy, Father, of our praise. We thank you, Father. Let everything that hath breath praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen. You spoke those words, let there be light. And it was. And in that same breath, 
Stars fell in line with one voice, creation cries, you do all things well. Sing it. So be praised, be praised forever and always. Oh, oh be praised, be praised, be praised, Lord. And lost in the dark, up under. I was very left to die, but I heard your voice calling my name. From the tomb I came alive. You do all things well. From the tomb I came alive. You, you do, do all things well.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I think of all you've done and all the battles you Come on, if you've experienced that, sing it. Hallelujah. Sing it to him. Hallelujah. Sing it again. When I think of what you've done. When I think of all you've done. All the battles you brought me over. Hallelujah. Come on, say that. How he's never let me fall. Yeah. How he's never let me fall. Now unto him who is able. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Let there never be a day. And let, let there never, never be a day. That we don't rise that and I don't praise. rise to bring you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, one more time. When I think of what he's done. Hallelujah. When I think of all your time. And all into, you're facing a giant or a valley, our prayer is that God would turn it around in the name of Jesus, he who is more than able, we glorify you, Father, hallelujah. I'm praying God comes to turn this thing around, God turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Cause all of my faith is in the, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, because breakthrough will the name of Jesus. I'm praying God come to turn this thing around. Sing it, church, say. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. We're believing God, with you. turn it around. I'm calling. Changes everything. Sing it loud, say. God, turn it around. God, Come turn on, it around. God, turn it around. up to something. God is doing something right now. He is up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. Right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing 
starting something right now. Right he's now. moving me. He's moving me. Making a way for someone. Making a way for God someone. is doing something God right now. Yes, something. he is. Right now. watching us online what is it that you need God to turn around this morning we're not a blab it and grab it church we're a word church we rely and lean on the word of God but the Bible says if God be for you who can be against you so this morning if you're facing a chasm and your promise is on the other side you define it you're watching online if that's you this morning and you need God to turn things around, maybe physically in your body, maybe financially in your world, just lift your hands real high to heaven. Yes, look at this. These are God's people. Don't be ashamed. This is a house of God. Jesus, turn it around. Because all of my hope. Come on. Could you sing that again? All of my hope. All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. All of my hope, and all of my hope is in the name, hey. the name of Jesus. Sing it one more time, sing, sing. Oh. Right. 
Christ is my firm foundation. He's the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken.
us online. God bless you. I want to pray in a moment, but before we do, just a scripture that God put on my heart as I was standing there worshiping uh, this morning. And it basically is found in Romans chapter 5. And it says this, uh, it says, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight, by faith, we have peace with God. Hallelujah. We've got peace with God, folks. It goes on to say, because of what the Lord Jesus has done for us. And see, when you place your faith in Christ, there is a peace that comes, folks. It says, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into a place of undeserved privilege. You are privileged. You're in a place of privilege in Christ. It says, where we now stand. Somebody say stand. So you and I, if we place our faith in Christ, we are standing in a place of privilege. You are privileged, God's privilege, God's favor, God's blessing, God's power, God's life is over you and is keeping you. It goes on to say, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice. Folks, that's why even when we're in the fire, we can still rejoice. We can still sing. Not in our own strength, but because there is a power that's upholding us. The power of God Almighty, the power of God's Spirit holds us and steadies us. So we don't fall apart like the rest of the world. <laughs> There's a supernatural undergirding that comes from God Almighty. The scripture goes on to say, and we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. Somebody say endurance. They help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character. Somebody say strength of character. Strength of character, but not only that, character strengthens our confident hope. Say confident hope. Confident hope and this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us. Do you know this morning? I said, do you know this morning? Those of you online, do you know this morning how dearly God loves you? How do we know this? Because he has given us his Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. The Spirit of Jesus, he brings a revelation, he brings a sense, a confidence of God's love. And if you don't have that confidence today, I want to challenge you to open up your heart to him and ask him, ask the Spirit of Jesus to come and to fill you with the knowledge of his love in a fresh new way. Folks, thank God for what he did yesterday, but today's a new day, and I need him today more than I've ever needed him before. If that's your testimony today, would you lift your hands and join me in prayer? Father, we lift our hands to you today. You said in your word, if we draw nigh to you, if we draw close to you, you would draw close to us. God, we're not interested in going through the motions we're not interested in playing religious games. We're not interested in just being in a sh for a show, Lord. We are here to meet with you. And so God, would you come draw nigh to us, draw close to us, draw us closer to you. Let the world around us begin to fade away and help us to see things from heaven's perspective. God, help us to know today when we leave this house how dearly you love us because your Holy Spirit has revealed that love to our hearts. Give us an endurance, God. Give us a strength of character. And God, cause there to be a confident hope that he who began a good work in us will see it through to completion. God, we honor you today and we offer you a sacrifice of praise. For you alone deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. In the mighty, 
matchless, holy, resurrected name of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a shout of praise today. Hallelujah. Give him a shout of praise online today. Hallelujah. We shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We shout unto God with the voice of praise. For God, we stand in a place of undeserved privilege, not because of what we've done, but because our faith in what you've accomplished on the cross in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you turn to at least three people before Stan Juke comes? our 212 director and tells us what's happening at Times Square Church. Would you turn to three people and tell somebody, if you've trusted in Jesus, you are privileged today. Come on, turn to somebody. for the very, very first time right here at 51st and Broadway. Any of you online, welcome. We're so glad that you are with us. And also for all of you that are online joining us from all over the world, we do want to ask you right now if you would share in the chat where you're joining us from. The city, the state, the country. If it's a country around the world, we would love to to feature later all over the world where you are joining us from. That would be amazing. Thank you so much. For everybody right here in the building, if you could just check your phones and make sure you put your phones on focus or silent just so that we're not distracted later during the preaching of the word, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, if you have a little one with you here in the service, that is awesome. We love that. We appreciate that. Uh, if they do begin to cry at any moment during the service, we do ask that you don't try to comfort them or, or still them. Just take them in the back, and our ushers, our gold ash um, jacketed ushers, will help you find your way to the second floor where there is a special room just for you and your baby, your little one. You can continue to watch the service, and your little one can continue to cry as much as they want. That would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Also, just so that you know, we have on the third floor, simultaneously, a service happening right now for your little ones all the way up to, to eighth grade. Uh, six weeks through fifth grade, uh, there is a TSC kids service going on there, and also junior high, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, there is a service going on for them right now on the third floor as well. High school, young adults, we will meet right here at 7 p.m. on Friday. We alternate between sanctuary and and the Annex, every single Friday night, please come, out, uh, come on out and f send folks that you know in that age group also. We would really greatly appreciate that. We do have a couple announcements for you. For all of everybody here that is usually with us in person, next Sunday is Daylight Savings. Don't forget that. And also, we will have the New York City Marathon. So just make sure that you allot for that, for the, the changes. And then finally, on November the 12th, Sunday, November the 12th, we are having water baptism one more time, once again, here at Times Square Church after the 1 p.m. service. Water baptism is an outward expression of an inward experience of having become born again. It's a, it's, a, it's a decision to commit your life to Jesus publicly in front of other people. And so we welcome you to, if you haven't been water baptized, to come out and get water baptized, to, to tell your family and friends to come out and be water baptized. Many folks come in for the first time or, or new, they get saved and they can get baptized the same day. We have t-shirts, shorts, slippers, towels, everything provided for you. So you can just uh, make that decision and commitment to the Lord. So without any further ado, we just want to turn your attention to the screen and say thank you. Thank you for your faithful tithes and offerings, your generosity. 
God has been doing mighty, mighty things around the world. And uh, as you will see in a moment on the screens, what God is doing specifically in the nation of Turkey through your faithful giving. God bless you. Times Square Church, through your generosity, God continues to provide the resources we need to partner with Pastor Youssef, an Arab Christian whose mission in life is to bring the message of salvation to Arab refugees in different countries of the Middle East. With your support, we partner with Cross Media Ministry to help refugees that fled from Syria and are now living in Turkey. The ministry helps widows with children, giving them food and support to cover basic needs like medical help, clothing, and education. Since last year, we helped Pastor Youssef to start sustainable programs for several of the widows that are now believers in Jesus. Some of the women have learned skills like sewing and making clothes, which can help generate income to support their families. Others have learned to be hairdressers, and now they have their own small beauty salon. The women are part of Bible study groups and fellowship at home in community with new believers in Jesus. Thank you so much for your generous support, Times Square Church, that God is using to reach people like these refugees in Turkey. We love sharing these stories with you as a reminder of how God is using your giving to help others all around the world. Thank you for being such a generous church. What an honor and privilege it is to partner with each of you to help spread the message of Jesus. If you're prepared to give today, I want to remind you that there are five ways you can give here at TSC. You can text Give TSC NYC to 77977. You can download the PushPay app and give that way. You can give online at tsc.nyc forward slash give. And the easiest way to give is by setting up a recurring gift on our website like we're showing you right now. We've made it simple to give automatically from your credit card, debit card, or checking account. Life gets busy, and this is a great way to put God first in your finances. It takes less than two minutes to set up a recurring gift, and we've made it simple and convenient for you to give online through our secure platform. Or you can always mail your check or money order to our office. And if you're with us in person today, you can give by putting your tithes and offerings in the basket that our ushers will be passing out in a few moments. Thanks again for being such a generous church. Lord, we exalt your name. Lord, 
Dennis. Those of you that don't know me already, probably wondering, how's a Puerto Rican name called Dennis? It should be Julio or Wong or something like that, more suitable. But my mother was a fan of Dennis the Menace many years ago and decided to give me that name. And like I shared before, for many years, I lived up to that name, Menace. But that was until I met Jesus. You know what he did? He picked me up, he turned me around, and what is this? Solid ground. And he's done many things for me throughout the years. He showed himself faithful and strong. He's been my provider, he's been my healer, he's been my rescue in my time of need, and he's done many, many things for me over the years. But greater than what he's done is who he is. King of kings and Lord of lords. And that's who he is. And because of that, we praise him. For that, of, for that we worship him and adore him. And for many years, I've been doing exactly that. And it doesn't get old. And if you want your life transformed from Dennis the Menace to Dennis the Redeemed, Dennis the Forgiven, Dennis the person who's been washed away, washed with the precious blood of Jesus, let today be the day of salvation for you. God bless you. Because of who you are, we give you glory.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. 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 You deserve the glory, God. You deserve the honor, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Whatever background you're from, whatever your nationality is, whatever country you're from, visiting with us online or in person, we declare to you today, Jesus is worthy to be praised. Worthy. so thankful that he's here. We're so thankful that you're here. Thank you for those that are visiting with us and those that are, this is your church. We're so grateful. Those that are watching from our overflow annex, those around New York City, around the country and the world. Some people um, I've talked with at the, uh, I'll mention that women's thing in just a moment because it was very powerful. I'll just, um, First, we want to say to those from all over the world, we, we love you. We're so glad that you're with us. Um, folks, watching with us live right now, let me read this to you. Um, we welcome those from Ghana, um, Mauritius, Rwanda, Liberia, Kenya, South Africa, Eswatini, Panama, Chile, Argentina. We welcome Honduras and Mexico, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Brazil, Venezuela, Peru, Guyana, Puerto Rico, Dominican, I knew that was coming, Dominican Republic, Barbados, St. Lucia, British Virgin Islands. We welcome Haiti, believing for God to move in Haiti and Cuba. We welcome Cuba today. We pray, pray God. 
We welcome those north of us in Canada, Norway, Belgium, Ireland, the UK, Germany, France, New Zealand, Italy, Sweden, Austria, the Netherlands, Albania, Bolivia, Poland, Malta, Hong Kong, the United Arab Emirates, Nepal, Philippines, Malaysia, and Singapore. Can we welcome all those that are watching all of We love you. We're so grateful for you. Just before we pray, I have to say this. There was a little thing happening yesterday called a women's gathering. And I've learned two things. There was women watching from all over the world. This place was jam-packed with women. I, and, I, and men, okay, let me just say this to the men first. You better step it up on worship. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Those ladies from the first note started worshiping. And I'm just, I, I got all upset with men yesterday. I'm just telling you right now. I just, those ladies, like they lived with their hands raised and sang at the top. This... Guys, this just doesn't do it for me. I, I, if, if you don't get it right, we're going to do more women's gatherings and more women's conferences. Men, your time is coming, so I'm going to give you a chance to redeem yourself. But I do, I do have to say this. What a, what a wonderful time. Ladies, I was so proud of you. And just what God did here and around the world was just such an incredible moment. Um, I do want to give one shout out. Uh, I was here yesterday and I just, I didn't do anything, but I got a chance to greet people in the balcony and go to the children's ministry. And then I was helping with security, not really, but I was sitting over there. But here's what blessed me. I stood the whole service and I got tired. And I just thought about our security team and those ushers that stand all service. I just want to say thank you to what you do. Seriously, my. After a while, I was I was going I, I was going to look for a seat, but I said if they stand, I'm going to stand, but only this one time, and it was incredible. I'm just I'm so grateful. Those in the in, those that are in those gold coats, those that are serving us the, uh, from security to us, what greeters, you are a blessing to this ministry. Thank you so much. Now, just before we pray, let me just say this to you. I want you to get this. You don't make Jesus Lord. He already is. You just need to recognize it. Let me just say that again, okay? Listen, you don't make Jesus Lord. It's not you going, Jesus, I make you Lord. He already is. Today, we're going to recognize him as Lord today. Let's pray. Father come in such a special way. We've sensed your presence here. I know what you put on my heart. I know what you're speaking to my heart. No, over these next few moments, would you come, Lord God, and allow us to recognize you as Lord. It's recognizing Lordship. Every Sunday when we're speaking to even those that are committing their lives to Christ to be born again, and we get to that C part that says confess him as Lord. I think sometimes we as the body of Christ forget to do that. We're asking new converts to do that, new believers that are, that, are, that are trusting you for the very first time. I pray that you would help us as old believers to confess you as Lord every single day, to say, you are Lord. You are Lord. And so we just pray, come and speak to us today. We need your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, choir. If Jesus is Lord of your life, then he has the right to interrupt your life anytime he wants to. If he is Lord, then he can interrupt anytime. It was the devotional writer, Henry Blackaby, who said, when you accepted him as Lord, you gave him the right to help himself to your life at any time that he wants to. And a few weeks ago, I experienced a God interruption. And in that interruption, I had a 40-year Bible question answered. I'll get to that in just a few moments. A few weeks ago, I, when we were finishing up the biblical worldview, um, and the, finally the letter Z and, and all done, I was just coming back in 
with Gary Wilkerson, David Wilkerson's son from Scotland. We were speaking with a team to the pastors there, and I had to fly back in on Saturday, got into the U.S. about 11, and then spoke that morning here on the final letter of the Biblical Worldview series. And then God interrupted what I thought was my rest time on Sunday night. And a few weeks ago, after finishing all this, it was interrupted with a text and then an inner voice. And it was that moment that I had to declare and recognize you are Lord of my life. You can interrupt any time that you want to. Let me tell you what happened to me a few Sunday nights ago. I was exhausted spiritually, physically, mentally. And when I got home, I was just sitting there in the living room and, and really just kind of uh, decompressing. And then I got a text from our general overseer, Pastor Carter Conlon, who was on the West Coast. He was in Portland speaking in Slavic churches. In fact, he said he, when he texted me, he was just driving by Mount St. Helen, the volcano, and said they're expecting it to erupt again. And he texted me a picture of the volcano and said, what could go wrong? That's what, that's what he texted. And then we were texting back and forth, um, just praying for you, Pastor Carter, praying that God use you. And he said, I was pulling into, he said, I'm pulling into the church. They're expecting 2,000 to be there for this special service there in Portland, Oregon. And then I heard a, a voice as I was resting that interrupted my evening. And I remember Pastor Carter's pulling into the parking lot. And then the voice said this, get up and pray for him. But I was resting and I was tired and so I whispered a prayer and the Holy Spirit said, get up, call him and pray for him right now. Now folks, it was, it, I was with some of my family members and I just got up, didn't cause a big scene, just got up, walked into our bedroom apartment and, uh, and as I just, I called him, we, we caught up for about five minutes and I, I said, Pastor Carter, before you go preach, I wanna pray for you. And Folks, I, I'm not saying this to be humorous. I'm just saying, I'm just saying it. It was just, it wasn't an incredible prayer. No angels showed up. Pastor Carter didn't feel this bolt of light. It was just a simple prayer. There was no shouting, no Ark of the Covenant. Nothing showed up at that point. But because of that interruption in prayer, I found an answer to a biblical question I've wrestled with for four decades. God spoke something to me. And it's been a challenge ever since a couple weeks ago. Every year I read through the Bible um, and I come to the month of October in my Bible reading program, I, I, am, I am literally just this, a question when I read these chapters is in my face and I've never been able to kind of see the answer or find my way through. And it's in October, I'm always in 1 Kings. And more specifically, 1 Kings 10 and 11. And here's the question that I would ask. Here it comes. And this is what helped me that night. How does the wisest man in the world become so unwise and reckless at the end of his life? How does the wisest man, for, forgive the English here, how does the wisest man in the world become so dumb in the next chapter of his life? And I'm speaking about Solomon Solomon, who is renowned for his wisdom, but because Solomon's wisdom is so extreme up to 1 Kings 10, his horrible ending has become obscure to all of us that, that sometimes forget about how this man ended his life one chapter after being world-renowned. And I'll read it to you in a moment. His wisdom is a global phenomenon. Solomon has just finished building the temple. The Ark of the Covenant is placed in it. There is prayer and rejoicing. There is a buzz not just happening in Jerusalem, but around the world. Rest from all of their enemies, from all the battles that David has fought is over. Rest has come. Rejoicing has filled the house. The temple has been built. And now, in regards to his wisdom as this leader, I want you to read how the nations flock to him. You'll recognize some of this. This is 1 Kings chapter 10. It said, when the queen of Sheba, 
heard about the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with difficult questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very large retinue with camels carrying spices and very much gold and precious stones. When she came to Solomon, she spoke to him about all that was in her heart. Solomon answered all of her questions. Nothing was hidden from the king, which he did not explain to her. And when the queen of Sheba perceived all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his table, the seating of his servants, like every detail, look at this, folks, the attendance of his waiters, their attire, his cupbearers, his steroid, by the way, he went up to the house of the Lord. There was no more spirit in her. That verse was explaining every detail had wisdom associated to it. Then she said to the king, it's true which I heard in my land, your words and your wisdom. Nevertheless, I did not believe the reports until I came and my eyes have seen it. And behold, the half was not even told me. You exceed in wisdom and prosperity the report which I heard. How blessed are your men. How blessed are these, your servants, who stand before you continually and get to hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, who delighted in you to set you on the throne of Israel because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore, he made you king to do justice and righteousness. Folks, this is amazing. This is coming from a foreign queen. And then look at verse 23, two more verses. So King Solomon became greater than all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. And all the earth was seeking the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. I, I read this every October. And then something happens to the wisest man in the world that has always perplexed me. And that night, a few weeks ago, I felt like God began to reveal something to me. And 1 Kings 10 ends and 1 Kings 11 would leave me dumbfounded for decades. Solomon's story abruptly ends in 1 Kings chapter 11. And 1 Kings chapter 11, something goes bad. Solomon goes bad. God gets angry with him, and literally, 1 Kings chapter 11 is a crash and burn of the wisest man that has ever lived. Most historians, don't miss this now, listen to this, just everyone that's watching online from around the world, I want you to listen, Norway and Belgium, listen for just a moment, Costa Rica and Cuba and Haiti, listen, Solomon is 50 years old as 1 Kings 11 begins, and he will die Eight years later, by age 58, historians say, in the prime of his life, after serving 40 years as the king, he becomes king in his late 20s, many historians believe, and in one chapter, eight years are compressed in that final chapter, compressed, and it's literally crash and burn. And as you read these verses, you're reading about a man in the prime of his life and his ministry and his career And now I want to read to you what happens and how I've been dumbfounded. We just read Sheba, Queen of Sheba, is is saying half the story hasn't even been told. Your your fame spreads across the world. Your attention to detail. And then folks, just as you hear about his renown, let me just read this to you and then walk you on a journey just over these next few moments here in Times Square Church and New York City, and those that are watching from all different places around the United States, listen now. 1 Kings chapter 11. As soon as it ends, we run right into these verses. Now, King Solomon loved many foreign women, along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and the Hittite woman, from the nations concerning which the Lord had said, God had said, you shall not associate with them, nor shall they associate with you. Now, remember this. This is the wisest man in the world. You should, for they will surely turn your heart away after their gods. Solomon held fast to these in love. He had 700 wives. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Princesses and 300 concubines. And his wives turned his heart away. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away from other gods, after other gods, and his heart was not wholly devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father had been. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, 
the detestable idol of the Ammonites. Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and did not follow the Lord fully as David his father has done. Now think about this. Uh, up to chapter 10, he builds the temple. He builds and just does this incredible work. And now in verse 7, then Solomon built something else. He built a high place for Chemosh, the detestable idol of Moab on the mountain, which is east of Jerusalem. And he's not done. And then he built another thing for Melech, the detestable idol of the sons of Ammon. And thus also he did for his foreign wives who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. Two more verses. Now the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who appeared to him. God showed up physically and spoke to him twice and commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods, but he did not observe what the Lord had commanded him. Folks, how does the wisest man in the world become the most reckless man in the world? How does the wisest man, how does this happen to him? And I've been perplexed by this for decades because I'm going, God, as I'm, as I'm approaching 60 years old in, in, in just a month and a half, and I'm going, God, I'm in ministry for 40 years, I want to end well. I, I want to finish. Anybody with me? You want to end well in your life? I, I, I don't want to just start off and then at the very end you just, you, you crash and burn. You're seen as the wisest man on the planet, but now you're the most short-sighted, reckless, and irresponsible man on the planet. God personally spoke and visited you twice, made promises to you of an enduring kingdom, and warned you what not, what not to do before it even happened. That's what it says in verse 10. He commanded him concerning those things that he should not go after the other gods. And he did not observe what the Lord had commanded him. And three times in that section, it says his heart was turned away. But it also says God spoke to him and commanded him. Be very clear about that. His heart was turning, but it wasn't some, this wasn't an accidental. This wasn't blindsided. It was literally him blowing by what God spoke to him, what God already foresaw and told him. Keep this in mind. Disobedience is so deadly, it overrides even wisdom. Disobedience is so powerful. Listen to me now. Those that are gifted here, whether to, whether, whether to make money or to do some craft, to play, to sing, to maybe you're here as an athlete or a Broadway actor. Maybe you signed a contract or getting ready to go to college, whatever, or a doctor. Listen to me careful. Disobedience can override all of that. No matter how, what your education may be, a disobedient woman or a disobedient man literally could sabotage a future. And Solomon was wise enough to give answers and direction to everybody else, but not to his own life. He knew how to counsel everybody. That comes to my, my, my career, my ministry. God help me if as a pastor, if I know how to give answers to everybody else's marriage, but my own is crumbling before me. God help me if I could stand in a pulpit and tell everybody else how to live their life while my life is, is, is slowly inside corroding, but I'm giving everybody else answers. That's Solomon. But how did he turn this way? How did he become reckless? This is the part. Here's what I've learned over the years, God constantly and consistently speaks to those who listen and obey him. Don't miss that. God will speak constantly. When people tell me, I can't hear from God, I'm going, okay, what have you been disobedient in? Because I know, I'm telling you, after walking with God, he will consistently and he will constantly speak to those. It was A.W. Tozer who said this. He said, the true follower of Christ will not ask, if I embrace this truth, what will it cost me? Rather, they'll say, this is truth. God help me to walk in it, no matter what comes. I'll always listen to you what the Holy Spirit is saying. But listen to me now. The worst thing that can happen to a person is when God is no longer speaking. When all you're left with is your own voice. When all you're left with is you listening to yourself. Just for a moment, listen to me. Romans 1 describes that kind of person 
who no longer has the voice of God speaking to them. It's called God gave them over. It's when God steps back and says, you're not listening any longer. I'm, I've been speaking, but now I'm giving you over to other voices. In fact, three things, it says, God gave them over to three things to direct their future. He says he gave them over to a depraved mind, degrading passions, and lusts of their heart. Don't miss this. That's what Romans 1 says. Look at those three things. A mind that has just gone haywire, a degrading passions and lusts of their heart. Folks, God gave them over. That phrase means God has excused himself from speaking. And now your own mind, your own passions, and your own lusts are the voice that you start to hear now. That's the danger. That's what Romans 1 talks about. But how does it happen? How does it happen to Solomon to move into recklessness, to move into irresponsibility? And then I realized, folks, here it comes. And then I realized Solomon answered the question for me. Solomon tells us what happened in 1 Kings 11 in another book of the Bible that he wrote. It, it came, it, it just, it spoke to me. That, that night that I got up to talk with, to pray with Pastor Carter was a revelation night for me. And I pray that it is for you here. I've sat in my office over 40 years of ministry with lives, with people who have sat opposite of me with a besetting sin in a bondage, a life controlling sin that has cost them ministry, marriage, family, jobs. And they're sitting before me as we're talking through the consequences, whether it turned into a divorce or kids, if children have become a strain. And one of the most important things that I do, folks, is I, I'll read to them before we leave this office, I'll read to them a passage of scripture to explain it to them that what they do next will determine their future. And this was where it all came to fruition. That Solomon answered my question on how 1 Corinthians, how 1 Kings 11 took place. 1 Kings 11 makes sense to me because of what I'm about to read to you in Proverbs chapter 1. This is, listen to this. This is Solomon speaking and wisdom is now calling out. Listen to these words. Proverbs 124. I called you and you refused. I stretched out my hand and you didn't even pay attention. You neglected my counsel and did not want my reproof. Therefore, I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your dread comes. When your dread comes like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. He says, they would not accept my counsel. They spurned my reproof. So shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be satiated with their own devices for the waywardness of the naive will kill them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But he who listens to me shall live securely and will be at ease from the dread of evil. Hallelujah. Listen. So that person who is sitting in my office, this is the question I'll ask. And I want you to hear this now. I will always ask this question. I said, before you started talking to that individual, I said, did you feel the conviction of God? I'll say, before you went to that website, did you feel the Holy Spirit say, stop? Before you stole that money or lied to your wife, before you did, did you feel, and I look right at them in the eye and say, did you feel before you were going to go out, before you were going to begin to go on a fake business, before all of that, did you feel the Holy Spirit speak to you and say, stop, don't do this. And every time, listen to me, people, every single time people go, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Then I say this, listen carefully right now, because you don't have wisdom for your next step. What, why, why do you say that, Pastor Dave? I said, because you've treated wisdom with contempt. And so now in your calamity, you're going, what is my next step? Wisdom just said, I won't speak to you. 
I won't even talk to you at this. See, Proverbs 1 answers the question, how does the wisest man in the world end as the most reckless man in the world? And here it is, Times Square Church. I believe Solomon was warned before, not not at number 700, I believe he was warned even at conversations at number one. Folks, listen, Solomon was told, don't date those girls long before he married them. Don't get in a relationship before they even discussed anything else about the future. But Solomon blew past conviction. Conviction is the protection of God over our lives. Listen, conviction is the warning light. It's a yellow light sometimes that God is speaking. Slow down, slow down. Once he turned a silent ear to one warning, folks, listen, then 700 wives later, he is going deeper and deeper. They turn his heart. He goes after idols. He builds them temples. God is angry. Folks, listen to me. When you read in the Greek New Testament, there are nine different words for the word sin. And the one that has always stood out to me is the word that's translated as trespass which means it's a word which means that you don't just get to the action. If you think about it, there are signs and barbed wire fences that say before you get there, you have to blow past a bunch of warning opportunities. Don't, don't trespass. Violators will be fine. You have to go through a fence. You have to sneak through. You, have to, you can't tell anybody. And what, it, what, what, the word, what that word actually means is that you just stop listening to the signs. That's what happened to Solomon. When you don't respond to the voice of God, then that voice gets fainter and fainter and your voice and lust gets louder and louder. The way that you silence degrading passions, lust inside of us and our own mind is by listening and responding to God's voice every single time. That's what silences, that's what keeps going. It's when God's voice is listened to, recognized, and obeyed. That's what happens. Elizabeth Elliot, the wife of the Christian martyr, Jim Elliot, said it like this. She says, I really don't think you're in a bargaining position with God. He's the master. He's the commanding officer. It's not for you to have input when he speaks to us. It's simply for you to accept the orders as the orders are given. You're not in a bargaining position. Not in a bargaining position going like, well, since I love them, I can sleep with them. Who who are you? Not according to this. He's the master. He's the commander. He's in charge of this. Anybody, anybody that stands in a pulpit that begins to violate this, I'm telling you, get out of that church. Get out of that church. If you see it in this, and listen, and it doesn't come from this pulpit, if it's here and I speak it, leave this church. This is the commanding officer speaking to us. Listen, I'm, I'm not angry. I'm, I'm really not. It, this is a revelation that has gripped hold of me. I just said, God, I want to hear you. And it, it gets nicer. Just, just stay a few more minutes and it'll get nice. I had a long time friend in my office a few weeks ago who has a, a very prestigious job interview in New York City. And he, he would be a solid Spirit-filled believer in a real key position. And he asked me this, he asked me, he says, how do I walk in the spirit in in this kind of setting, in this kind of venue? And I looked at him and I said, Stephen, every time you feel a nudge or the voice of the spirit, respond to it. Don't ever hold back. Don't ever delay when the Holy Spirit's speaking to you. See, 1 Kings 11 are the last eight years of Solomon's life. He dies at 58 in the prime of his life because he stopped listening. Now his lust and his degrading passions 
are leading him. Well, one's not enough. Two's not enough. Three's not enough. 700 isn't even enough. He goes after 300 concubines. I kept thinking to myself, Solomon, have you lost your mind? And the answer is yes. Totally. Think about this. He marries 700 women in eight years. That's a wedding every four days. You're going, what, is he out of his mind? I said, one wedding is enough for me. One every four days? Here's our registry. Here's, the, here's what you can go to Target and you can buy plates. And all of a sudden, four days later, here's our registry, Bed Bath & Beyond. You can just go right there and get that. Here's our registry. Here's our, I'd go like, forget it, bro. You're done at this point. You've lost your mind. And he did. The wisest man in the world becomes the most reckless man. We were getting ready to board a plane some weeks ago to Budapest to speak to pastors. And I just got off the phone with a pastor friend from California who had been sick. And as soon as I hung up the phone, the Holy Spirit said to me, I told you to pray for him. And, the, and it was saying, we were, we were running, we were getting ready to go to the gate to board the plane. And I, that moment I knew, I am not getting on that plane, a disobedient man. I'm calling him, they, fly away. I'm, I'm gonna call this man up. If he doesn't answer, I'm gonna make, I'll pray on his voicemail. I'll, but I'm not getting on a plane. I'm, I'm not, no disobedient man's flying over the Atlantic Ocean. I'm telling you that right now. I got on that phone and I said, listen, I gotta tell, I'm boarding in like 30 seconds, but I'm gonna pray a prayer for you of healing. Why? Because I need the voice of the Holy Spirit in my life. I need God to speak to me every single day. See, when you don't listen to the voice of God, when I don't listen to the voice of God, we then open up our life to this exponential mess 700 times, whatever. Think how incredible that is. After the Holy Spirit, I believe, according to Solomon, after the Holy Spirit said no to the first foreign women he was going to marry, he didn't listen, then it must have gotten easier at number 10. It must have gotten easier at number 50. It must have gotten easier at number 200. It, and at some point, God had to just shut off heaven, and now you're just doing whatever you want. And by 700, your 700th wedding, you're doing with any, whatever you want to do. Folks, this is what I realized at that moment on that Sunday night. Any one of us has 700 times of something lurking in our hearts. Every one of us, folks, it could be gambling, it could be sleeping with men, it could be whatever, drunken, and God is going, it's lurking there, and it's waiting to bust out. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit when he speaks to us. <laughs> obedience is protection against that 700. That's what obedience is. When you don't obey, then you open up yourselves. We open up ourselves. What does that mean, Pastor Tim? Here it is. Listen to the small promptings of the Holy Spirit. When he says, pray with someone. When he says, don't do this. Keep your mouth shut. Don't tell this story. And if you, and if you make a mistake, apologize immediately. Okay, let me help you for just a moment. Here it is. When you feel that, when you feel upon you and it says, apologize. Tell the whole truth. Don't exaggerate. Look at me now. That's not the devil telling you to apologize. So when, the, when you hear apologize to your spouse, don't bind the devil. <laughs> Open up your mouth and apologize. Satan will never say apologize. Satan will never say tell the whole truth. Satan will never say be generous and give in this offering. Satan will never say, be quiet and don't defend yourself. That's the Holy Spirit. And some of you have forgotten that. You're going to hear apologize. You're going to hear confess. You're going to hear tell the whole truth. You're going to hear don't exist. I made a whole list of this only because those are all the things he has spoken to me. Don't exaggerate. Tell the truth. Confess to Cindy. Speak the truth here. Don't say anything. Don't defend yourself. 
I'm not trying to put it on you. I'm telling you, these are the things. And, and, I'm, and I started to respond to everything because when you stop listening to God's voice, you are then left with your own voice. And inside of Solomon was lust waiting to explode into 700 wives when he stopped listening to God. First Kings chapter 11, those final years, it, it, there was no more chapters to his life. It was done. It was over with because he stopped listening. Folks, when I, I was, I've been reading through the book of Jeremiah. And you know the number one phrase I kept reading in the book of Jeremiah? It was this phrase. The people would not listen. The people would not listen. I, I listed 20 times. It kept saying, the people would not listen. The people would not listen. The people would not listen. And it was this challenge of hearing the voice of God. You're, this is the part, you're not even going to believe me, but I'm going to say this. Musicians come, I'm done. I know this is, this is, I know some of you are looking at me going like, this is not true. He's going to go for the, no, no, no. I want you to listen. We are here today at Times Square Church because a man heard the voice of God and responded to it. David Wilkerson picked up a Life magazine all the way back in 1957 and began to turn through the pages. He came to a certain page that stuck out to him, and on that page, he saw the trial taking place in New York City. As he looked at the artist's rendition in a courtroom of boys on trial, he said in crossing the switchblade, he looked at the bewilderment, hatred, and despair. He said he opened up the magazine to get a closer look and David Wilkerson said he began to weep. The youth on trial were there. There were members of the, gang, of, the, of the gang called the Dragons. And what they did was these gang members were on trial for the brutal murder of a 15-year-old polio victim and killed Michael Farmer, a young defenseless boy. They had stabbed Michael multiple times, left him dead at the park here in New York City. And the story was revolting to the peaceful country preacher is what was written. And then suddenly a voice came. Here's the voice. Ready for this? This is what he heard. Go to New York City and help those boys. I, like, I, I did this purposely. You know how sometimes I'll put quotes up there and say this is who said it? This is who said that one. God said this one. Go to New York City. You sit here today because a man listened to, heard those words and didn't go, that can't be God. That has to be the death. I'm, I, have a, I have a growing church in Pennsylvania. Th think how Brother Dave, who is he, he is affectionately known as, think of Brother Dave that, that is the argument that starts to go on inside of him. The, no, this can't be right. I'm a country preacher. Go to the gangs? What, what am I supposed to do? Show up at a courtroom? How, how, am, I supposed to, how am I supposed to do this? How, how in the world can I do this? It's, it, it seems impossible. Folks, this is the voice of the Holy Spirit that we've got to become acquainted with. And you can. The more you obey, the more consistently God will continue to speak. It was Brother Andrew, the man who wrote the incredible Christian classic, God Smuggler, who wrote these words. He said, God, whenever, wherever, however you want me, I'll go. I'll begin this minute. Lord, as I stand up from this place and take my first step forward, this is what he said. Will you consider this a step toward complete obedience to you? I call it the step of yes. That's what I call it. That's what I call it. And that's what I wanted to do. It may have seemed so trite to people that on that Sunday night, as I'm texting, I praying for you, Pastor Carter. Hey, love you. Praying that God use you in the church. And then the voice said, get up and call him. And to some, that may not seem like much, but I said, God, I don't want you to stop speaking to me. And if it's, if what you need is just that simplicity, folks, here's what I want to give you a verse that has become part of my life. Stand with me. I know this is getting even more of a miracle. Stand with me at 1142. Some of you are going, does this, does this even work? Here it is. This is the, this is the verse I've been asking. Listen to this. I said it this morning. 
Isaiah 50 verse 4 he awakens me morning by morning and he awakens my ear to listen as a disciple he awakens me morning by morning he awakens my ear to listen as a disciple okay everybody for just a moment freeze and look right up here because here's what's I'm, I'm gonna tell you what 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 your voice is saying because what, what we have done so many times we've listened to our own voice let's get out of here before we have to respond to this let's be the first that's listening to the wrong voice. do you think the Holy Spirit is saying get out before do you think the Holy Spirit's going hey this is your good time to get out and get your car first let me help you that's not God and it's not God going, well, pretend we have to go to the restroom with your coat. We know all the games, folks. We know all the games that go on. Some of you think you're like Jason Bourne. We know all the, we know all of the things. What you, and listen, I don't want to be left with my own thoughts. I don't want to be left with my own lust. I don't want to be left with any of that. I want to hear from the Holy Spirit. I want the nudge. I want God to speak to me. God will speak to you through the preaching and the pulpit, not just this one, but there are good pulpits. Through godly counsel, through conviction, a bothered conscience, through circumstances. God is always speaking. But here, here's the part I'll just say, and then I want to pray for you. God's voice and that nudge, listen to me, God's voice and that nudge is a treasure to me. I don't ever want to lose it. If God stops me and says, apologize to Ricardo or apologize to Corinne, I don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose. I don't want him ever fighting me. Here it comes now. In contempt. You, how many have heard that? That phrase, contempt of court. You know what contempt of court is? It's, I was reading the story of someone, I think it was in, in, it was either in Massachusetts or Maine, it was one of those two, that somebody was being given a sentence of two year probation, didn't have to go to jail. It was something with either, it was either possession of drugs or it was, a, a, it was either some type of disturb. I can't remember what it was. And they said, while the judge was sentencing them, they yawned with no thought of it. Yawned during the sentencing. And the judge stopped and says, sentence changed, six months in jail. It says contempt of court. What, you know what contempt is? Here it is, here's the definition of contempt. Contempt is the feeling that a person that sits in a position of authority is beneath your consideration not deserving our attention. He is the king of all kings. He is the Lord of all lords. And if he chooses to speak, why wouldn't you treasure that right now? Why wouldn't you treasure that? So you're going, I need direction of the Lord. You know what I go back to sometimes when I'm not hearing God's voice? I go back to that old story in 1 Kings when the prophets were building a school and lost the accent and Elijah comes and said you're trying to you're trying to build something and you don't even have the edge anymore and this is what he says where did you lose it where did you lose it that's what I go back to I go back to who do I need to apologize to who do I need to confess to who do I need to give to what am I playing around with some people are going like, listen, this is not a money thing, but some people are going like, I, I, I need God's provision. And God goes, I've been asking you to tithe. I knew I, I, knew I wouldn't get any amen. Man, man. So that's okay. That's okay. But because but, but, but the, the issue is this. The issue is this. Where did you lose it at? That's what, that's what God has been dealing with me these last three weeks. Awaken my ears as a disciple. Tell me when to apologize. May I never hold your voice in contempt and going, it's beneath me. This inner, that my day, folks, it wasn't beneath me to interrupt my day and go, I will call. If you ask me to make a phone call, done. Whether it's stopping in a lobby and the Holy Spirit says, pray for them. 
Pray for them. Don't just greet them. Pray for them right there. I just, I want us, I want us to be a church that is sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. I want us to hear what God has to say. God, help us. May we never hold your voice in contempt. Don't leave us with our own lusts, oh God. Don't leave us with our own degrading passions. But oh God, we need your voice today as a church. We need your voice today, oh God. I need it, God. I'm crying out before these incredible people. I don't ever want you to be silent to me, Holy Spirit. May wisdom never speak like Proverbs 1 and said, I called, but you refused. I, I, I shouted, but you wouldn't even pay attention. We're paying attention today, God. We're going to heed what you're saying to us. God, when my mouth is starting to gossip or say something, stop me in Jesus' name. When I'm about to speak evil of something, when I'm about to use a word that you're going, no, 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 don't say that word. That doesn't honor me. Don't use, don't use profanity. May we hear the Holy Spirit because that's not right. And when we do mess up, Lord, let us hear, repent, apologize. God, just help us as a church. Help me, help us to grow. Awaken us every morning and give us the ear of a disciple. I, I just feel so strongly, and I'm just going to say this. If you're here today and you say, I need an awakening in my ear to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. I need an awakening. God, don't leave me with my own passions and lust. Don't leave me. Don't give me over. Don't excuse yourself from, from speaking to me. I will, know, I will not. I choose this day not to hold, be call, called out that I've been in contempt but your voice, I treasure the voice of the Holy Spirit. Balcony, main floor. I feel so strongly about this today. If you're here in this place and say, Pastor Tim, I need an awakening in my soul. I need a new sensitivity just to come. I need for him to come speak again. I want to respond. I want this to make this a fresh decision to come to the, I'm going to open up these altars in a second. Let me help you, okay? So let me just walk you through this. If you feel in your heart something saying, you don't need to go, that's not God. And if you feel something saying, you need to go, don't bind the devil. He may be at, this is going to be a fresh commitment to help us to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Balcony, main floor. Balcony, you may be going like, oh, that's such a long walk. It doesn't matter. The voice of God is a treasure to all of us. Wherever you're at, get out of your seat and walk down here. Just quickly, if you're going, I need him to awaken me again. As, as Ricardo and the team sing, you come, you come. Let's sing. Come on, Ricardo. Blessed assurance. Hallelujah. Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fight. Time after time Born of His Spirit Washed in His blood And what He did for me on Calvary Is more than enough Come on, sing it. I trust in God My Savior All is at rest I know the author of tomorrow Has sorted my sins So this 
just lift your hands to him just right now just and would you just pray that Isaiah 50 verse 4 would you just ask God say awaken my ear every single morning just ask him right now just say awaken me God awaken me to have the ear of a disciple that I would listen to your voice every single day would you tell him just say I would not only listen but I will obey God I repent of any contempt of anything that I would assume that my ways are greater than your ways that I would assume that my ways are even higher than your ways we declare today God's ways are higher. God's ways are greater. God's ways are wiser. So Father, even today with our hands raised, may these be the symbol of yes. Speak to me, Holy Spirit. Speak to me, Holy Spirit. Speak to me, Holy Spirit. God, I just pray. I stand with these precious people today. And God, I just ask you right now, I don't want to live a reckless life. I don't want to live an irresponsible life. I don't want to be held in contempt that God, when the voice of the King of all kings is speaking, I want to be able to listen. I want to be able to hear. I don't want to be led. I don't want to be given over to my own passions, to my own lusts, and to my own voices. I want the voice of God. We want the voice of God. The voice of God over our marriage, the voice of God over relationships, the voice of God at our workplace, the voice of God over our leisure, the voice of God in our privacy, the voice of God in our car, on a subway, voice of God. Speak to us, speak to us today, speak to us as a church, as leaders, speak to us today. I pray for every pastor and leader from around the country and around the world. Oh God, would you just speak, speak to your church again oh God speak through your pulpits again Lord God give us the voice of God let your church oh God in these last days I pray it would not go out with a whimper but it would go out triumphantly that we have heard the voice of God we will not bend a knee Lord Jesus but we will listen to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords we want God's voice over our lives right now hallelujah hallelujah Church, just look at me for a second. Look at me for a second. Thank you for all those that are responding. I want to say this to the balcony and the main floor. We're going to sing this and close in just a moment. It's those nudges. I'm going to ask you to respond to those nudges. You're going to feel those nudges come. When my friend Stephen asked me, I said, Stephen, what did the Holy Spirit say to you? What was the last thing the Holy Spirit said to you? This is what he told me. He said, I just finished my taxes, and the Holy Spirit said I was supposed to pray for my unsaved accountant who just been diagnosed with terminal cancer. I said, did you do it? He goes, I didn't. He says, but I'm calling him up as soon as I leave this office. That's exactly what he did. Called his accountant, lives overseas in London, called his accountant up, and they felt, he said, he said, I, I just, I said, Stephen, what you did was you just opened your ears up to hear his voice even clearer. That's what you've done. What the Holy Spirit is saying to you, that's what God is doing. So when you begin to go, God, I obey. And even if you feel like, ah, oh, I didn't do it, you could, God is gracious, long suffering, full of compassion. You're not done with, you're not a failure. Just go, God, give me another shot. And you know what's amazing? God does. He does. With every head up, every eye looking around, I'm gonna be as simple. I'm not, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something. It's gonna be this simple. There is a nudge, there is an urging of the Holy Spirit right now. You are not a Christian, you're away from God. I'm not here to convince you, I'm here to tell you this that what you're feeling, you're going, why do I feel in here that I'm missing something? You're missing Jesus in your life. You need to be born again. 
Aren't you going to go through the ABCs and all this stuff? No, no, no. I'm going to rely on the urging and the nudging of the Holy Spirit right now. And if you're here in this place, balcony, main floor, and online, around the world, and you feel that nudge to go, I, I, I need to get, get right with God and give my life to Him with everybody looking around. You may have been invited here and you're going like, why do I feel this way? That's the Holy Spirit. He's convicting. And if you're here with everybody looking around, balcony, main floor, and say, Pastor Tim, I want my life. I want to get, I've got to get this right. I feel, I feel him. I feel him speaking to me right now. Without any hesitation, you say, please pray with me. Because I, I want to pray here at the end. If you just go, pray with me. I've got to get my life right with God. Hold your hand up as high as you can. Hold it up as high as you can. You're feeling that nudge. Look at it. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Keep them up. Keep them up. Keep them up. All over this all over this place. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Online. Okay, put your hands down for just a second. Let me tell you something. This is the first step of feeling the voice of the Holy Spirit. You're responding to what God is saying. Uh, the dozens of hands all over this place just responding. Let's, let's invite them in now, okay? Let's invite them in. Come on, let's all say this together. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe that on the cross, you took my sin, my shame, and my guilt, and you died for it. You faced hell for me, so I wouldn't have to go. You rose from the dead to give me a place in heaven, a purpose on earth, and a relationship with your Father. Today, Lord Jesus, I turn from my sin to be born again. God is my Father. Jesus is my Savior. The Holy Spirit is my helper. The Bible is my guide. And heaven is my home. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. As we sing this song, some of you are going to get ready to go. That's great. Get ready to go. But here's what the nudges are going to be. Let me, let me give you some help on the nudges today, okay? Our team is going to be over there at exit 7. At 7 is kind of hard to see, but it's right there to my left, to your right. You see them waving to you. Those smiling faces, they smile that way all the time. They want to help those that raise their hand that pray this. Five, seven minutes. If you need a Bible, they're going to help you. You just meet over there. Some of you are going to feel you need to go. We want you to go. Um, online, text the word decided. That's your hand raise. Your hand raise online is decided. And those in person, you can even text decided. But here's, the, here's what I want to encourage you. Get ready for this now. For some of you, the first nudge is going to be, as Ricardo leads us, to lift your hands. You're going, ah, oh, I've never done that before. And, you, and, and even if you have to do it, you know, secretly the first time. <laughs> just, that's okay. God's going, okay, just listen. And you're going, I guarantee you keep doing it. It's going to be like this pretty soon. It's going to be like this. It's going to be... How many know what I'm talking about? The first time, the first time it's kind of like, finally it's like, I don't care who watches, I'm gonna listen to the Holy Spirit. Okay, listen to the second thing. You're gonna feel a nudge for some of you that have made a commitment that you've been delaying water baptism. You need to get water baptized. Water baptism doesn't get you saved. It is a second step. That water will not change you. That is good old New York City water. And if you go down as a sinner, you may come up as a sick sinner with that water. I'm just telling you right now. You better get saved before we baptize. So you may feel that, that hey, I've got you know, November 12th. You can go online. You can QR code the, the, the armrest right next to you and go to events. It'll lead you through all that. So whether you need to go, whether you just want to stay, but then our, ush, then, our, then our prayer teams, red shirts, all in front of me, are, are going to be up here. We, when that curtain comes down, they're going to be up here. And you may feel a nudge. Go get prayed for. Go get prayed for. Respond to the nudges. It's not the devil saying, don't get prayed for. It's God. God is saying, go get prayed. Lift your hands. Whatever this is, get baptized. Let the, let's respond to those. Who, can we sing this just one time through, and then we close and we'll be done today. Come on. For some of you, maybe it's the lifting of your hands. Let's sing this together. I trust, I trust in God. God. My Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail.
trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail, never, never. Sing it one more time. Let me hear you say, 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 I trust. Hey. Slip your hands to heaven. Church, this week, if you feel a little push on your back, if you feel a little spring in your step, know it's because this church is praying for you. That's Times Square Church believing in you. God, I bless this congregation from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, that what they touch would prosper to glorify your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for the peace of God that pass passes all understanding and that will guard our heart and guard our mind. We love you. We pray these things in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all of God's people said, amen. Would you give the Lord a round of applause? We love you. If you need prayer for anything, we have prayer partners up here. Go with God. God bless you. We will see you Tuesday night for prayer and for church. God bless you. Have an amazing week.